In keeping with the theme of Game of Thrones Season 8 spoilers, in this video, I want to bring you guys yet another plot leak, although this one was written by an online magazine. Now this plot leak originally came out before Season 7 even ended, so it's going to be a lot of fun to discuss and decipher how many things they got wrong. But for this video, I'm just going to read the plot leak for Episode 6, and if you guys do thoroughly enjoy it, I'll go back and read the ones for Episodes 1 through 5. Without any further ado, let's go ahead and begin. Before we get started, please slap a like on this video as the like goal is going to be, and this one's a big one, 1,000. Also, make sure you're subscribed and then make sure you have your notifications turned on so that way you get alerted every single time I drop a Game of Thrones video throughout this long night. Okay, now I don't really feel like I need to reiterate this in every video, although I get at least 50 to 70 comments on the videos saying, how could you even think this is real? You're an idiot for even covering this in your video. These are so fake. Blah, 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 blah. All of that nonsense. So, I'll just go ahead and reiterate. These leaks, 99.9% .9 of them, are all a load of crap. Some of them can be confirmed through filming spoilers, which are, in my opinion, some of the only legitimate leaks. But these plot leaks, for the most part, are a load of crap. Now, I've linked down below in the description for the source of these leaks, and they come to us from desinerd.co.in. So, scene one takes place in Dragonstone. And this is, remember, for episode six. So there's a lot of stuff that hasn't happened, but like I said, we'll just continue on. Jaime, Braun, Gendry, Tyrion, and Ser Davos arrive back in Dragonstone. Edmure supposedly had gone back to Riverrun. Jon receives them and informs them about Daenerys' death. Tyrion is very saddened when he hears that Daenerys has died and has a chat with Jon Snow in the Cliffs of Dragonstone. So I guess this is supposed to be mirroring that you know, conversation they had in Season 7. He tells Jon that he believed in Daenerys. He believed that she could make a better place out of this shit world and that he could better give up on that dream. Further, Tyrion asks what killed Daenerys. Jon mentions that she died in childbirth and the Golden Company took her body to hand it over to Cersei Lannister. He asks what happened with the baby, on which Jon replies that their baby girl is alive and well. Tyrion smiles and then notices a single Greyjoy ship landing in Dragonstone. Jon and Tyrion walk toward the ship. It's no one but Yara Greyjoy who has arrived in Dragonstone. She informs him that she escaped Euron but lost almost all of her army. John asks her about Theon's whereabouts, and she tells him that he probably didn't make it out alive when the dead arrived. Then we pick up with the next scene, which takes place in King's Landing. Daenerys' body is hanging from the walls of King's Landing. The people of King's Landing are throwing shit at her body and making fun of her corpse. Nearby is an alehouse where Arya and the Hound currently reside. They hear that Euron is king now, and that King's Landing will probably face another attack by Euron's enemies. Arya wants to help John fight with him, but the Hound thinks he's done with that shit for now. Arya says that she doesn't care what the Hound does, but she'll stay to fight alongside her brother. The Hound eventually does agree to stay with her and help Jon and company. We then see Euron speaking with the commanders of the Golden Company in the throne room. He thanks them for bringing the body of the Dragon Queen to him and thinks it's a shame that they didn't bring her alive. He admits that he would have fucked her if they had brought her alive. Euron Greyjoy expects that a reckoning is coming from the King of the North and that they should strike first. Euron commands the new maester to send a raven to every kingdom with all the great lords in mind and how they should swear fealty to him, otherwise he'll attack them with his army of swords from King's Landing. So the next scene picks up and we return to Dragonstone. Jon, Jaime, Bronn, Tyrion, Jorah, Sansa, Gendry, Davos, Misande, Samwell, and Yara are present at the War Council discussing the message of Euron Greyjoy. Euron Greyjoy has declared himself King of the Seven Kingdoms after Queen Cersei's tragic death. Jaime is convinced that Euron is behind the murder of Queen Cersei and he is furious. Yara agrees with Jaime. Davos states his opinion that this madman shouldn't be ruling the Seven Kingdoms and that they should fight back with everything they've got. Gendry expresses his hatred towards Euron and has taken the Baratheon seat away from his deceased family. Tyrion and Jaime want to use the Lannister army to fight Euron. Tyrion also thinks they should convince Daenerys' remaining loyal men to keep fighting for Jon and for Dan Danny's offspring. So we have the North, the Lannister army, the remaining Dothraki, Unsullied, and Drogon all fighting for Jon Snow. It's Samwell who later addresses Jon's parentage again, but Jon doesn't want Samwell to tell the rest about this. Jon clearly states that he never wanted to be king, if Davos who vouches for him. He tells the others that Jon is their last chance to save the people of Westeros from Euron Greyjoy. Dirty hands and he believes that Jon would make a good king. He's their only hope. The others agree with Davos and Jon accepts his newly required position eventually. Okay, so 
<clears throat> just to clarify, whenever you hear me mess up on a word, it's because this plot leak is not written by someone who has English as their first language. So anyway, after the war council, John talks with his sister, Sansa. Sansa is confused with John's parentage and finds it difficult to believe that the father who she's loved her whole life, has lied to his family, to Catelyn, to John. John agrees with Sansa and asks her to take care of the North and of Winterfell, as she's the true heir to Winterfell. She agrees and tells John she was planning to leave Dragonstone anyway. The two share a hug before parting ways. Misande informs John that the old woman came to visit him in Dragonstone again. Old Melisandre comes to tell John she's ready to pay for her sins and then reveals her true identity. She tells a shocked audience that she's done her part and that the prophecy has come true. Davos vouches to have the witch killed at last. Gendry agrees with Davos. Misande also points out that she tried to convince Darius, Daenerys to have her baby sacrificed to the Lord of Light. John proposes to hang the old Melisandre, but Melisandre asks John to have her killed by fire because that's the purest form of death. She's executed outside of Dragonstone and she's killed by Drogon's fire. The ships are starting to leave Dragonstone to sail for the Blackwater Bay. Tyrion, Misande, Davos, Samwell, and baby Lyanna stay in Dragonstone for the time being. Jorah, Gendry, Jaime, and Bronn are seen boarding the ships. Jon asks Tyrion and Misande to take care for Lyanna, and if he doesn't return alive, Jon also says goodbye to Samwell and thanks him for him always being loyal to him. So, <clears throat> I'm going to continue on with scene four, but apparently Jon and Daenerys, they do have a child, and then they name that child Lyanna. Now, if they do have a daughter, I 100% think that there is like a 95% chance that if, if for some reason John is given, you know, the ultimate decision on what the baby's name will be, of course he would choose Lyanna. After he finds out about his legitimate parentage, it would make sense to name his daughter after the mother that he never knew, who he thought was his aunt his entire life. The only way I see that John has 100% say so in the name of this child is if Daenerys does indeed pass away. I think... The baby will most likely be given some sort of Targaryen first name because both John and Daenerys are Targaryen. And now we pick back up with scene four, and this one takes place in King's Landing. Euron is seen on the walls of King's Landing and sees how Targaryen ships are approaching. Daenerys' rotting body can be seen as well. We notice Jon Snow wearing Targaryen slash Stark armor and mounting Drogon above the ships. Euron brings forward the scorpions that were redesigned on his orders. Lannister men first land ashore and start to invade. We see the men of the Golden Company guarding the city walls. Two commanders of the Golden Company are riding elephants. The elephants tread on several Lannister men. We can see the Northern Army joining the Lannisters and the Dothraki coming in from all sides. Jon and Drogon join the fight and Drogon sets one of the commanders together with the elephant on fire. The poor animal stresses out and kills quite some men unknown. Basically, the elephant freaks out and kills a bunch of the enemy's troops. We see Yara giving the best of herself with her axe and Gendry smashing a man's skull with his hammer. Euron commands his men to take down Drogon with the scorpions. He has all three of them. First, they seem to fail to do, but then Drogon got hit two times in his right wing, prompting him to land. The Lannister army, the Stark army, and the Dothraki fight ferociously and manage to break through the city gates. Jon tries to flee with Drogon to the dragon pit, but he sees that Drogon is hurting and cannot properly fly anymore. Arya notices that Drogon's flying toward the dragon pit. Meanwhile, the Hound has joined Jaime, Bronn, and Jor. Gendry and Yara decide to fight their way to the Red Keep, where they think Euron is hiding himself right now. Euron actually commands his men to go to the dragon pit and destroy the beast together with Jon Snow. Bronn and Jaime see Euron together with the Golden Company moving towards the dragon pit, and they decide to go with him. Jamie starts to realize that Jon is, is in danger. He's the only one besides Tyrion who knows that there's wildfire left beneath the dragon pit. If Drogon starts to breathe fire right there, the wildfire could destroy the entire dragon pit and take everyone out with it. Arya and Nymeria are now entering the dragon pit to see Jon caring for Drogon's injuries. Jon tries to remove the spears out of Drogon's wings, and Jon is very surprised to see Arya there and wants her to leave King's Landing immediately. Arya does not want to leave Jon at first, indicating that she wants to fight with them. Arya strokes Drogon, commenting that she's always dreamed of riding on a dragon when she was younger, looking up to the tales of the Targaryen warriors. Jon smiles, but strongly implores Arya to leave the dragon pit now, because they're all in grave danger. They both share a hug before Arya decides to listen to Jon and leave. She's clearly upset. Yara and Gendry are inside the Red Keep, but come to the conclusion that Euron has escaped the dragon pit, to the dragon pit. Much to Yara's annoyment because she wanted to finish her uncle herself. Euron and the Golden Company 
invade the Dragon Pit. Euron starts the battle with Jon Snow. Jaime hastens to the Dragon Pit together with the Hound, Dora, and some Lannister men to get out of there. Bronn doesn't want to risk his life and stays where he is. Euron almost manages to kill off Jon Snow, but it's Jaime who suddenly stabs him from behind, mortally wounding him. Jamie tries to get John out of the dragon pit while Jorah and the Hound fight the remaining cell swords to make sure John gets out of the dragon pit. Men of the Golden Company keep throwing spears at Drogon, and it's obvious that Drogon is dying. At one point, drawing, Drogon unknowingly unleashes fire, causing the dragon pit to tremble. John realize, Jamie realizes that Drogon has caused the wildfire to ignite beneath the dragon pit and commands John to run for his life. A gravely injured Euron laughs before he dies, telling them that they're all fucked. Before John, the Hound, Jamie, and Jorah can escape, it's too late, and the wildfire consumes the whole dragon pit. Nobody makes it out alive. Yara and Gendry witness the wildfire explosion from a distance with much horror. People are seen fleeing King's Landing before any more wildfire can ignite. Then we continue on with scene 5, and this one takes place in Dragonstone. Tyrion sees a few Targaryen ships returning to Dragonstone. Yara and Theon inform Tyrion, Davos, Samwell, and Missandei about the wildfire explosion and also about Jon. His brother and Jor probably didn't make it out alive. Tyrion is broken when he hears the news and so are Samwell and Davos when they hear about Jon's death. Samwell and Davos have some small talk and Samwell asks Davos what he will do now. Davos tells Sam he's probably returns to his wife since he has not seen her in a long time and he, he left her a while ago. Samwell smiles and tells Davos he's planning to do the same thing. When they see Arya and Nymeria ready to board on a ship, Arya tells the captain that she's done with Westeros. The captain asks what a small girl and a wolf are doing are going to do in Essos now that there's peace in Westeros. Arya responds with Valamor Ghoulis. We see Arya's ship heading east right before there's a time jump of three years. The next shot is of Sam teaching little Sam how to read. Lady Gilly Tarly, how she's named now, is Lady of the Reach. Sam's mother, Tala and Gilly, look to Samwell and Little Sam and both share the love for these two. Sam comes in between them and asks what they're talking about, but Sam's mother jokes that it was only woman talk. Sam and Gilly share a last scene together. Gilly has good news for Sam. She's pregnant with his child. Sam clearly on cloud nine when he finds out that he's having his own child with Gilly. He also makes sure that Gilly that he'll always regard Little Sam as his own son and that he'll inherit the Reach one day. And then this is scene number six and it takes place in Winterfell. Sorry, this is where it really starts to fall apart. We see Lady Sansa and Lady Gendry now being together. Sansa watches with Gendry. Edmure and Rosalind, how Edmure's sons are sparring with each other. Edmure still holds the title of Lord of the River One. Sansa notices that one of Edmure's sons carries Arya's sword, Needle, and asks how she retrieved it. Edmure answers that his son, Willem, has found the sword in the woods when they were hunting. He asks whether his sister is still alive, and w at which Sansa responds that she probably would be. Arya always has found a way to survive somehow. Sansa and Gendry visit the crypts of Winterfell. Jon's statue stands in the crypts as well. Gendry asks Sansa if they truly belong down there. Sansa says that the only place where Jon truly belongs next to his real is next to his real father Ned and with his brothers. Gendry jokes that he wasn't named Jon, actually. Sansa says that he will always remain Jon Snow to her. Sansa mentions that she has had a lot of work to do and that she's the Lady of Winterfell and the Lady of the Vale now. She asks Gendry what he will do with Storm's End now that it's left unoccupied. Gendry says he's planning to do to do soon that he's been acknowledged as the true... Okay, what? Now, I'm just going to summarize the last part because apparently the grammatical errors just increased by tenfold in this last paragraph. So basically, they try to say that, you know, little Liana grows up and she asks about what happened in the past and about her parents. Then the very last scene is with a scene in the far, far north in the lands of Always Winter. A single White Walker rides to and brings the body of Bran Stark to an altar. Remembering that the Night King stabbed Bran in episode 2, he was stabbed in the heart with Dragonglass. He performs a certain ritual and Brands opens his eyes. They're bright blue. The White Walker puts a crown on Brands' head and the altar slowly begins changing into that one of ice. And then, you know, we're left with the natural thought of winter is coming. So basically, they're trying to say that it ends with a giant cyclical nature and somehow this happens. I don't even want to begin to dissect how freaking stupid this plot leak was because it was pretty dumb. There were so many different points in it where I was like, Okay, you're just completely talking out of your ass right now, but you gotta remember, this came out before season 7 even ended. So, this clearly is not legit at all. I cannot say that enough, but 
Let's debate down below in the comment section. All right, I want to thank you all so, so much for watching this video. Please slap a like on this as the like goal is going to be 420. Also, make sure you're scri subscribed and then make sure you have your notifications turned on. I want to thank all of you all so, so much for watching this video. And a super special shout out to every single member of my Patreon family over on patreon.com slash your hunts reviews. Thank you all again so, so much. I know this was kind of a long one. If you guys want me to cover some of the characters who haven't had that many spoilers about the filming process of Game of Thrones Season 8, let me know down in the comment section and I'll start cooking that video up for you. I want to thank you all so, so much again for watching. My name is Mark and this has been Sir Hunts Review.